Hi there, Broby223 here, and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I've spent this fall conducting a wide variety of different 12-gauge ammunition tests, both in ballistics gelatin and on the pattern board. Today, you've tuned into episode 2.0, which is a bit of a trial run of a different format by comparison to the Series 1 tests we did in previous episodes, and I'll be doing this today using Federal's premium copper-plated double-op buckshot with Federal's flight control wad. As requested by a subscriber, the Series 2 format is designed to try and illustrate the effects of distance to target on terminal penetration. Jumping right in, here's how I've set up to do the test and you can see there's not much to it other than a whole lot of gelatin. I've got three carefully calibrated blocks set up just off the berm and I'm going to walk back and shoot them from 5, 20 and 40 yards. I'm using a brand new 870 police magnum and here we go with one round at 5 yards. In retrospect, it was a bit of a mistake to use this gun because of its brand new status. Straight from the factory, the gun had some serious issues with its shell lifter, and you'll notice this in future episodes I filmed the same day. I knew I should have used my older police mag. Oh well, it's what I brought today, and I just used it to fire a single round into the gelatin from a distance of 20 yards. Now I'm going to back up to 40 and try and get 3 rounds into that last block. The reason I chose the 870 police mag for this test is because of its long sight radius to string sights. I wanted irons to have a higher probability of hitting the block out this far. So after all that, I walked up to check it out and discovered what was my second mistake for this first episode of the new format. There's a lot of blabbing on the internet about how quickly round shot loses velocity, and I let this influence my thinking in assuming that at the increased distance of 20 yards, we'd have less than 18 inches of total penetration. It turns out this was really wrong, as the buckshot pellets completely penetrated the single block. So rather than consume another four expensive gelatin blocks to get a complete air-free test on camera in one continuous shot, I added another half a block behind it and hit it with a second round. In retrospect, I should have also done this for the third block, however this would have resulted in not enough gelatin for the testing I had planned for the rest of the day. There were some pellets to recover from the third block, so I chose to move on, but now I regret that I did this. I'll know better for next time. Now let's move on and check out the penetration data in each of the three setups. I'll publish the calibration BB data in the notes above such that folks so inclined can calculate their own standardization corrections, but note that all these blocks calibrated very closely to each other and I consider them to be consistent for comparative purposes. Here's a look at the block shot from 5 yards. Overall penetration was excellent and at this range with the federal flight control wad, the impact pattern was a bore sized single hole. Despite this though, the 8.5 by 8.5 inch cross-sectional area of my blocks was insufficient to capture all the pellets. After about 6 inches of straight penetration through the target media, they deflect considerably resulting in losing some pellets out the sides of the block. Moving over now to the 20 yard setup, you'll see there's multiple wound tracks and some of them seem like they go nowhere. Remember, I had to add gelatin here after my first test round completely penetrated a solo single block. After adding a second half block, I shot again and only then managed to contain some complete wound tracks. You can see significant deflection of the penetration trajectories also occurred at this range, and this resulted in some pellets being lost out the edges of the ballistics gel. The impact pattern at 20 yards was a super tight 3.5 inches, a telling indicator of the flight control wad's amazing effectiveness in cylinder board and improved cylinder guns. All in all, not that much degradation in the penetration characteristics at 20 yards. Now here's the 40 yard test setup. I fired 3 rounds into this block and wound up with 9 wound channels. It's pretty amazing to me that at 40 yards with an improved cylinder gun, that a full 30% of this round's pattern still winds up in an 8 inch square. I again regret only using one gelatin block here, as there's at least 3 pellets that exited the back of the block and I would have liked to have learned the maximum degree of their penetration. Also in the regret department, after now seeing the 3 round effect in this test format, I would have liked to employ it for the 20 yard test, however I've again learned my lesson for next time. Total penetration was impressive, and very surprising to me as I was expecting much less. 
that pretty much wraps up the field component of this episode. Now let's finish off with a look at some of the shot recovered from the gelatin blocks. Here's the shot payload of an unfired round. It's 9 pellets of 33 caliber copper plated lead, and not shown here is the amazing flight control wad and pile of plastic buffering material Federal uses to purportedly reduce shot deformation. Sliding the towel over, now here's the shot recovered from the 5 yard test. The copper plated BBs are from the gelatin calibration process, and that one really strange projectile is actually two pellets that fuse together upon impact. The other four recovered pellets exhibited some bulging like expansion, and their super rough texture was caused by compaction with the buffering material during firing. Here's the shot from the 20 and 40 yard tests. There was almost no differentiation between the two, so I grouped them together to save a bit of time. They don't exhibit the same degree of bulging, however there was definitely some deformation and they still exhibit that really rough texture that comes from the buffering material. In future episodes, when I show you some lead shot recovered from gelatin, come back and compare it to this stuff and you'll see that the copper plating and buffer combination works well to prevent shot deformation. That wraps up this first episode of Series 2 where we examined Federal's premium vital shot copper plated double odd buckshot with the flight control wad. This episode is also something of a beta test for the new test format and I definitely made some mistakes I hope to fix in future episodes where we'll look at some number 4 buckshot and BB loads in this new longer range format. Keep in mind, the format for this test was suggested by a viewer like you, so if there's something you'd like to see tested, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe if you'd like to be notified when I post future episodes. Take care, and bye for now.